Father, we ask that you prepare our hearts and our minds to understand things because, Lord, we know that in your word it says that the heart is beyond cure. No one can understand it. And so, Father, we know that wisdom, understanding comes from you alone. We pray that you open our hearts, you prepare our hearts to understand things so that we may be aware and know how to face, how to manage, how to handle the enemy's attacks. In Jesus' mighty name, so you can use us even more for your greater glory. So God, prepare your vessels now. And uh, Lord, equip us and deliver us also today. In Yeshua's mighty name, amen. Okay, so again, today's topic, <laughs> I entitled Transformers. Okay, that, that, that's not the original topic, but uh, I, I did that because I, we're all familiar. Okay, this is only true in the, in the world of movies, in the world of Hollywood. Hollywood, I'm sorry. Okay? Not holy. Hollywood. <laughs> okay? So, it, is it a true story? Yes, it is a true story. Story made by them. It's true story, but not real life. Okay? It's, it, but just a story. Is it a story? Yes. So, it's a true story <laughs> in their context. Do you understand? You know, when, when we were at that training on brain health, the, the doctor explained to us how this generation hallucinates and fantasizes, you know, when they're alone in the room, trying to remember the pain, what happened, and then they fantasize, and then they, you know, all of these things, they, they're creating their own truth. This generation of today has no, you know, they're not afraid to hide their sinful life. And, and, and what is influencing them? They, they don't have regard for God. They don't fear God. You know, they just exchange partners. They, they, you know, they engage into sin, pornography. They engage into adultery, fornication. And they, they announce it. They, they even sell themselves online. But I guess you know how the enemy is using the media, okay? Even the media to attack Christians. Because if Christians yield to sin and then the accuser of the brethren can start working and then you don't feel like preaching the gospel anymore. You don't feel like, you know, ministering to people anymore. You know why? Because you feel condemned. Hello? Yeah. That's why we have to what? Expose the works of the enemy. And I'm telling you today, you are one of the transformers. The real one. I know a lot of you have watched that movie, Transformers. And there are two uh, groups in that movie. They are opposing forces. The, the first one is the Autobots. What is the other one? Decepticons, okay? So, some transform for good, okay? But some transform for what? For bad, for evil, okay? So, that's a, that's a big problem. And then, uh, the thing is, some of the robots, they transform to protect. But there were some robots, they transform for what? For evil agenda, for evil cause. This is true even to people. Yeah. This is true. There are some people who exist to kill, steal, and destroy. Right. They are here to fulfill the agenda of the enemy, of the devil. Okay? But which side are you? So it's very clear, even in the issue of Israel against terrorism. Okay? So, okay, that's not my topic, but let me, you know, bring you back where this all started. Okay? In the Bible, the original or the first transformer. Okay? Because I tell you, transforming 
could either be good or bad. Okay? Good or bad. So, like I said a while ago, we are all transformers. Either you, you transform into something worse <laughs> or something godly for the better, for unto holiness. Amen? But the first one to transform as, you know, as far as I can remember from Scripture is this creature, the first transformer. He was the guardian cherub, according to Ezekiel 28. And there was, he was innocent, perfect. You know, he, 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 he had this, uh, his clothing was, he was with the ornamental uh, stones and etc. It was so filled with beauty. And he thought that this glory comes from him. Okay, let me just read to you Ezekiel 28. This is the word the Lord against or concerning the king of Tyre and say to him, this is what the sovereign Lord says, you were seal, the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Now look, this prophecy was directed to the what? To the king of Tyre or Tyre. Okay? But why is it that the prophecy does not really speak about the king? But it talks about years back, during the time of creation. Why? Because the force behind those kings is what? It's the devil. Do you understand? So, the thing is this. It says, verse 13, you were in Eden. Okay? It says, the garden of God. If you read Genesis, okay, this is not about the king during the time. It is about the force behind the king. It says, every precious stone adorned you. Carnelian, chrysolite, and emerald, topaz, onyx, jasper, lapis, lazuli, turquoise, and beryl. Your settings and mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. So you can imagine this is a beautiful angel. Okay? And verse 14 says, You were anointed as guardian cherub. cherub. So, uh, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. So see, now you can imagine this is the garden of Eden. You walk among the fire stones. Whoa! Very nice place. And it's, verse 15 says, You were blameless in all your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. That's the transformation. Okay? And etc., etc., etc. So God drove this uh, guardian cherub in in this grace from the mount of God. And the Bible says, God said, I expelled you, guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty. And you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. I, so I threw you to the earth. Where did God throw the devil? To the earth. I made the spectacle of you before kings. That's why Jesus said, I saw Satan fell like lightning. That's uh, Ezekiel chapter 28. Now, Isaiah 14, let me just read to you. On the day the Lord gives you relief from your suffering and turmoil and from the harsh labored force on you, this is God speaking to his people, you will take up this taunt against the king of Babylon. Now, it's about the king of Babylon. Okay? But the prophecy against the king of Babylon is not directly to the king of Babylon. So he, the Bible again is speaking against the force or the influencer behind the king of Babylon. There is an evil force working to that evil king that time. And so it says, 
You will to take up this taunt against the king of Babylon. How the oppressor has come to an end. Now, who is this oppressor? How his fury has ended. Verse 5. The Lord has broken the rod of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers, which in anger struck down peoples with unceasing blows and in fury subdued nations with relentless aggression. All the lands are at rest and at peace. They break into singing. Okay, let, let, let me jump to verse 11. It says, All your pomp, okay, or your splendor, or your glory, talking about the devil, all your pomp has been brought down to the grave, all with the noise of your harps. Maggots are spread out beneath you and worms cover you. The point is this angel was created with musical instruments. So imagine you, 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 you're in a helicopter and then you throw down a, a piano. <laughs> and then... <laughs> so this, this angel, you know, he was thrown down to the earth and then... <laughs> okay? And then he was filled with the worms. You see the transformation from the angel of light into something that looks like a, a bad creature. He was cursed. Okay? And in verse 12... Uh, uh, Isaiah 14, 12, it says, How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. That is where Lucifer uh, came. Okay? I mean, verse 13 says, You said in your heart, this is the heart of Lucifer. He said, I will ascend to the heavens. Verse 13. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly on the utter utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down, God said. You are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. Etc. Etc. And it says in verse 16, this, this is important. Those who see you stare at you. They ponder at your fate. F-A-T-E. Is it the man who shook the earth and made kingdoms tremble? The man who made the world a wilderness, who overthrew its cities and would not let his captives go home? Can you connect? This is what Hamas is doing. Yeah. This is the spirit of the devil. He would like to destroy cities, doesn't care about the people. You know, he laid waste, you know, the, the, their, their place. People dying doesn't care. And then about the hostages until today, we're praying for the hostages, hostages be taken home, that they can go home. Amen? Amen. Dead or alive. So, friends, this is the work of the enemy. He kills, steals, and destroys. Let's pray that the people, the people around the world will wake up and understand that what's going on is pure evil. Okay? Anti-Semitism is, you know what? It's demonic. Yeah. It is demonic. So don't side with the devil, friends. Don't side with the devil. That's the work of the, of the devil, Satan. Okay. Now, uh, Jesus in Luke 10, 18, he said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Let me read to you Revelation 12, 7 about this transformer, the devil, okay? Revelation 12, starting from verse 7, very important. This is the last war. It says, then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough. And they lost their place in heaven. Verse 9, the great dragon. Did you read that? Okay, Revelation 12, 9. The great dragon was hurled down that ancient serpent called the devil. Who was that ancient serpent? The serpent who tempted Adam and Eve. That's the devil. That's Satan. And it says here, that ancient serpent called the devil, Kama, or Satan, Kama, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. This is Revelation chapter 12. 
Verse 7 to 9. So you see, the devil can transform from an angel of light. Okay? He will, you know, mask himself and de to deceive people. And it says, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, verse 10, Now have come the salvation and the power of the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before God day and night has been hurled down. They triumph over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them, but woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. So friends, mauna ni. Dapat nato masabdan na diri sa kalibutan ang evil forces naga work yun. As uh, time goes by, the world becomes more darker and darker. But God's people will shine brighter and brighter. Amen. People of God, it's time to transform. Amen. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, okay, you, you were adopted into the kingdom of God. Remember, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. As I deposit, guaranteeing our salvation. Amen? And we, become, we became what? A new creation. That's the transformation, friends. Amen? The Bible says anyone who is in Christ is a what? A new creation. The old is past. The old is gone. Behold, the new has come. Are you a transformer? Transform. So remember, there are two things once you are born again. First is the instantaneous sanctification. But the other one is what? The process. Why? Because you're still in the flesh. And the flesh, we have the uh, sinful uh, nature in the flesh. As long as you are in the flesh, you are prone to sin. Hello? That is why we need to fight back. That's why there is a battle going on here right now as long as we're here. And we need to stand our ground. Amen? And so friends, in order for you to fight the battle, first you need to understand. Transform. Transform. Amen? Where is that in the Bible? Romans 12, uh, chap uh, chapter 12, verse 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So, on sa daw. Therefore, sanctification is also a what? Not just an instantaneous process, but what? It is a... A, a uh, I forgot the word. It is a progressive, okay? It's a, it's a process, okay? The point, the, the, if you read it again, do not conform to the pattern of this world. What is the fad? You know, unsay uso karon? Trending. What's trending? And the Bible says, do not conform. Amen. Do not be like them. Do not transform yourself to act like them. Like those people who do not know the Lord. Do not be like them. Amen? Instead, show yourself. Tell them who you are, what you believe. Okay? Share to them your testimony. Testify what Jesus did to you. Amen? So they too can be transformed. Amen? Amen? So that Christ is formed in them also once they accept the gospel of Christ. So it says, but be ye transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind. Renewing means what? It's a process. It's a continuous process. Renewing of your mind. Okay? Amen? Amen? Ingnay mga tupad, wala pa na human si Lord sa ato. 
Samtang, okay, while we are here, okay, we are a work in progress. Amen? But he who began a good work in us, he is faithful to make it to completion. Amen? So how is our minds transformed? Direct to the point, the Word of God. The truth, the Word of God. If our minds create our own truth by the influence of the world, I tell you, that's not the truth. Who is the truth? Jesus. He said in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through Him. Amen? And so, where can we find this truth? From the Word of God. Hello? So, let me first uh, give you this point. Get wisdom from God's Word at any cost. At all cost. We need this. You cannot fight the, your battle against the... What's the group again? If there is the Autobots, the other group... <laughs> Decepticons. <laughs> the Decepticons, you know, that's a right term for the enemy. Decepticon. Because they're deceivers. <laughs> what they do, they deceive. And you cannot stand against deception without first knowing the truth. Then how do you know the truth? From the word, the Bible says, saturate your mind. Saturate your mind with the word of God. Amen. Okay? Amen? So once you know the truth, then you know how to decipher which is right, which is wrong, which is true, which is false. Amen? So, friends, from Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 to 23, it says, My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Verse 21. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them. And health to one's whole body. There's a song, right? From Don Moen. <laughs> I, I don't remember. But it's life and health to one's body. Which is what? Wisdom. From God. Verse 23, it says, Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. It's a wellspring of life in other versions. Now listen, it says, Above all else, guard your heart. There's another song from Steve Green. <laughs> Correct? Guard your heart. Guard, guard your heart. Don't trade it for pleasure. Don't give it away. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. For the payment of pleasure, there's a high price to pay. So, guard your heart. You are free to make choices. But you are not free from the consequences of those choices you made. Hello. Guard your heart. Transform and guard your heart. <laughs> so for application, this is from the Lord Jesus Christ. This is an excellent example. If you remember Matthew chapter 4, this account was the account where when Jesus fasted for 40 days and then after he fasted, the devil came and tried to tempt him. So don't think that you fasted long enough and then the devil will not approach you or attack you or tempt you because you fasted. No. That's the time that the devil will try you after you fasted. I, I know that. Been there. Every time you do long fast, the devil will come attack you. But you will learn a lesson because you become more sensitive to the Holy Spirit when you pray and fast. And you can detect, you, you know which is of the enemy and not when you fast. Because you humble your soul, you humble your flesh before God when you pray and fast. And that is why, friends, let me tell you this. Reading from Matthew chapter 4, 
If you notice, I'm not going to read the whole uh, 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 Matthew 4 from verses 1 to 11. I'm not going to read that. But if you notice, the devil came and the tempter said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. And Jesus answered, It is written. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that what? Comes out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. The devil has no answer. Why? Because uh, it's really written. And so the second attempt of the devil, he said again, if you are the son of God, he said, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command His angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Again, Jesus replied. Jesus answered the devil. He said, It is, what? It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord did not use an armalite or, or a, a, a knife or a, a, some kind of a weapon. What did the Lord use? The Word. He said, it is written. It is written. But take notice. How will the enemy approach a person that he wants to devour, to tempt? He will use what? Your position, your rank, your title, your function. He will say, if you're the son of God, or if you're a missionary, if you're a worship leader, if you're the... the what? <laughs> if you're... What? If you are a youth leader, if you are a DBS leader, do you understand? Yeah. He will use your position... And then once you yield to his temptation, he will use it again. Oh, you're a bad uh, evangelist. You're a bad Bible study leader. Oh, you failed. You will not rise again. Why will you repent? You will fall again. So the devil will use it to accuse you. That's why his introduction to Jesus, if you are the son of God, because Jesus is the son of God. Hello? Hello? So, let us be careful. And it says, uh, the third one, Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written. Again, we need to familiarize ourselves or not even just, not just familiarize, but if you can, memorize scriptures. Hello? Hello? <laughs> now I remember my time uh, my, when I, we were at the Baptist training. You know, we were told to memorize one to three verses every day. So when we report, <laughs> before we begin with our class, we have to recite the verses. Every day. That's why in school, that day I remember, they called me the walking concordance. Because whenever there's a discussion, what verse is that again? They look at me and I said, because we were told to memorize. Well, are we crazy to do that? No. The Jews memorize scriptures. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? That's why our leader in Israel, our guide, he said, they may kill us, but they cannot take our faith, our faith from God. Because it's here and it's here. You can burn all the manuscripts, but it's here. <laughs> I said, yeah. So, okay, amen? amen? Now, I'm gonna go into more technical, more detailed thing, okay? So, help, allow me to introduce to you the first example. In counseling class, there is what we call, there is a subject that is purely focused on the core belief system okay now i know this is hard to understand but just look at this as a, a three compartments 
The first compartment is about the events. Events done, events taught, that, or events that happened to us, around us, and by us. So these are things that you encounter, that you experience in your life. Then, okay, and then it goes through filtration. Where? In the heart. Because the heart feels. So, this is where our memories are stored. This is where we, we feel the pain. If somebody talks about you uh, at your back, stab you, uh, gossip you, slander you, slandered you, that hurts, right? So you feel emotional pain and also the lies of Satan will attack uh, truth from the word, the spirit are stored also in the heart. So all of this, okay, whether true or not true, can be stored in the heart. So can you imagine an equalizer? Every person is like that. We have a nub for our spirituality, a nub for our emotion, a nub for, you know, different nubs. A voice for the world, a voice of the flesh. Do you understand? Your personal desires, your own ambition. Some people, their spiritual nub is woo, way down. But their knob about their flesh is so high. So even though this person is a Christian, you will not see him walking as a Christian because his concern is about himself. Self. The knob for self is shoots up and the spiritual knob is down. So when, when something happens, how will the person react or respond according to which knob is on you know, a higher volume or level? So either the lies of the enemy or what? The stored word of God in your heart. Which one is ruling your heart? Is it the voice of God or your voice? Or the voice of the world? The influence of your friends, the influence of money, the influence of drugs, the influence of sin, sinful living, or the Word of God. This is true even to Christians. That's why many Christians are not living right with God because the nub that is turned high is not the Word of God. So when something happens, they don't listen to the Word of God. They do not even care to consult the Word of God. Who will they consult? Their flesh, their feelings. Do you understand? So instead of running to the pastor, to the counselor, to, 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 to the Bible study leader, what do they do? They go to their wrong friends and ask for advice. And their wrong friends will give them wrong advices. Do you understand? Why? Because the nub for the spiritual life is it's down. Turn it up. Hello. Put the, the flesh to zero. Put the voice of the devil to zero. Put the, 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 the wrong friends to zero. Do you understand? Look for the right friends. Turn it up. Hello. This is what we're trying to tell you. Because we have different experiences in life. We've been through a lot, I know. If I ask all of you, it's not going to end. Okay? But we're not here to compare our past experiences. We're not here to compare our pains. But we're here to control which volume to turn up and down. Transform. Amen. Amen. That's why you have to saturate your mind with the Word of God. There is no other solution. Let me, can I be more detailed? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, this is very hard. I'm, I'm sorry, but I just want you to see how this thing functions. So on top, you see, this is about the damaged relationships. It's the heart. Who was the doctor who, who drafted this? Ah, oh, no, John Rieger. John Rieger. So 
You see the pressure patterns from top going to the heart and the heart feels it. And then if you went through some abuses, maybe physical abuse, uh, spiritual verbal, you know, you've been bad-mouthed by maybe in the family or what, and goes to the heart, and then the effect will be, uh, the tendency will be a behavior, it's a spiritual issue. It becomes a spiritual issue. And that is why when some people experience some of this, it results to this. Let's say, for example, bitterness. So they cannot forgive. It's hard to forgive. What else? Temporal values. What is temporal values? They will look for some activities where they can find <sighs> healing, temporary, like drinking, vices, go to nightclubs, mga sex, you know, fornication. Because for them, we feel so hurt in the house, we want to go out and try to relieve ourselves. Do you, do you understand? So these things happen, there are temporal values. Some people, they, they, they engage with the drugs, I mean, uh, illegal yeah, mga substances. Okay, so now we have defiance, moral, moral failure. When you say moral failure, these people no longer, uh, they don't know what is sin or not. For them, everything is tolerable, everything is accepted as long as you're happy. So do you understand? That is the effect. But most of the times, you have to go back to the house, to the home, to the family. <laughs> and then, a lot of people we counsel, go back to the house, and then we talk, then they share about their parents, and then, again, their parents went through the same thing. So how are we going to cut the cycle? First, they need to be aware of what they need to regulate. We need to pray. We need to cut. Okay, they need to change. Amen. And there's no other way to do it. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. It is only through Jesus' word and cooperating with the Holy Spirit. That's, that's my last point. Listen. But before that, now I know this is, these events, the abuse issues actually multiplies the negative effect from the top. Okay. And the negative effect, there are some things that we experience, especially if, if our parents are so uh, authoritarian, okay? Let's, for example, and then your parents doesn't know how to appreciate. They only know how to criticize. <laughs> You're good for nothing, you, you know, this and that. And it has a bad effect. Or if, if the parent will say, oh, you're so ugly. So you will grow up, you will try to make yourself beautiful because you were told you were ugly. Do you understand? So it will fall to what? Temporal values. What's, what's that? You're going to be dependent on makeups. You're going to be dependent on things like that. Do you, do you understand? These are effects of what was done to you, what was said about you. It will affect your heart. Are you listening? I don't know. You're tired. You can't understand. So this is the, the new thing. When we counsel people, now look, you have to attend our class to understand this, how this thing works. Okay, this is so complicated now. And then the people that we counsel, they realize, okay, so this is the map you're walking through. This is where you came from. And this is where you're heading. So we will tell them what will be the tendency years from now. How will you, your reaction to this kind of people? And then they will, they, they're shocked that when time comes, they said, oh, it's true. It's true. Yes, of course, it's true. But what do you need to do? This is a time that you're aware. Apply the word of God. Set your spirit free from bandages. Amen. Set your spirit free from deception, from the oppression of the enemy. Because the devil will use your past experiences against you. He's very good in reminding us with our past. Let go of the past. Amen. Amen. The past belongs to the past. It's not your future. Hallelujah. Remind the devil of his future. 
Amen. So again, let me try to uh, simplify. Okay, this is now a simplified version. <laughs> I showed you the complicated uh, illustration. This one is simple. It's just one body. That's you. And you are comprised with body, soul, and spirit. The tripartite being. But in that one body, in that one person, you have what? A soul, a spirit. Okay? You have an emotion. So it's all mixed in one. <laughs> but after having, having shared with you the illustration, you need to understand that there are four fronts in the battle. Israel has five fronts. <laughs> Now added Iran. <laughs> but listen, meaning to say, on every side, you know, there is an attack going on. We need to understand from that illustration, same position, this will be the attacks. Now, sometimes there are pressures, there are things or discipline or uh, advices or instructions or even the word of God being preached to us that demands change. That will require us to respond after the preaching. Do you understand? It is for us either to react or respond. But that's still a pressure. So it depends on how you receive it. Do you understand? So it could, if you don't receive it, that will hurt you. If that's the word of God. Hello? For example, let me give you an example. If you're not a believer in the Lord, okay, are you listening? And somebody, where's Nathan? Okay, Nathan came and he started preaching the gospel. Oh, ikaw na lang kapatid. Now, this is uh, an evangelist also. So, the very good example, you're seated in front. Okay, this is John Paul. If John Paul is preaching the gospel, not everyone who hears the preaching of the gospel will like it. True or false? True. Yes. Those people who will accept it, they will not have a heart problem. They, they, there's no bitterness, no pain, no issue of unforgiveness. Why? Because they accepted the word of God. But to those who are living in sin, in darkness, they don't want their sin exposed. So when you preach the gospel and they're not ready to repent, they will be offended. Why? Because the gospel of Christ is confrontational. Do you understand? The same thing. Whether good, it, it depends on how you accept it. it it's going to cause you pain. Do you understand? So you need to have a good filtration. To filter which is good and which is not. Saturate your mind with the Word of God. That's what the Bible says. Thank you, kapatid. Palakpakan natin si John Paul. So we have what? Four fronts. So we have what? Sa top, sa ubos, sa right, sa left. North, south, east, and west. And the enemy is attacking. Now, you can guard one side. But remember, there are other three sides. <laughs> this is where, this is most people that we counsel have problems. Some people are very spiritual because even pastors, you know, pastors come and then, Pastor, do, 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 and they're doing great in the ministry, but then they will say something, this is my weakness. This, this, this. They're so spiritual. They're so on fire. And, and they have done so much for the Lord. Great fruits. But there is an area in their lives that said, Pastor, now you can ground me. You can discipline me. Because the problem that the, that pastor has is still connected with the past. before marriage that has not been sanctified <laughs> it's an open door that's not been guarded this is the problem with many spiritual leaders they know the word but they don't know how to handle their emotions <laughs> When somebody, when something happens in the church, they explode. 
And instead of running to God, they ended up drinking, they ended up doing things, doing stuff that are done in darkness. And, and when pastors, some people confess, not just pastors, they realize that, oh, I saw them in this, you know, the places that you're not supposed to be there, <laughs> you know, where there's lights and then the drinking and all the stuff. But leaders from different Christian groups, they met on the same place. What are you doing there? Self-care? With lots of wine and drinking and all this, uh, these girls and... No, 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 look, look. I am happy that one of these... Uh, I don't want to mention if it's a male or female. <laughs> okay, this is trying to unload. Okay? He's, try, he's asking for help. Pastor, please help me. What can I do? And I'm happy to hear, but I'm sad that I heard that leaders from different Christian groups are on the same place. And they act as though they don't know each other. They, 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 so, do you understand? This is why I would like to tell you there is not a one front battle. Four fronts. The more spiritual you are, the greater attack you will face. The devil will send a lot of his hordes. The greater rank you are, the greater responsibility you have in the kingdom of God, the more the devil will send demons to attack you. Dili na lang mo mag-serve. <laughs> Dili na lang mi mag-active. Para wala. Mayroon ba? Sa una, wala pa ko kay Lord. Wala ko trials. Karun, nagtawad ko kung Jesus na ako'y trials. That's the point. You will be tried. Uh, Jesus fasted for 40 days. After fasting for 40 days, the devil himself, not a deputy, he did not send a deputy. He himself, the devil came and tried to tempt the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't think that when you receive promotion from the Lord to serve Him for His glory by grace, that the enemy that you will face a little tiny enemy. You have to be prepared. Transform. Amen? And apply the word of the Lord. So let me continue. You have to guard all fronts. Guard your heart. So everything that goes either north, south, east, and west, filter it with the word of God. Is it from God or not? Is it of the Lord or not? You know, my friend told me, how, so how, we, how do we discern, brother? Let's memorize Galatians. You know, in Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit and the, uh, the fruit of the Spirit and the deeds of the flesh. So you memorize the fruit of the Spirit and the deeds of the flesh. So whatever you want to discern or decide on, you think, does this belong to the fruit of the Spirit? Or the deeds of the flesh. <laughs> so you don't need to ask the Lord, Lord, is this okay? Because you already know. Correct? Filter. What is your filter? The truth. Where do you get the truth? From the Word of God. Hello. That's it. So God, the spiritual attack, the abuses, the abuses, how do you, how do you face it? You ask God's grace. I know not everything can be forgiven just right away, especially if you're raped with 10 people. That's so hard. It's hard to tell the girl, he's crying, oh, I was raped last night by 10 people. And then, oh, forgive, forgive. Yeah, I know you forgive, but that times that person cannot forgive. Because if you say, you forgive! So you are adding to the pain. Because he, the, the, the girl who was just raped is actually eh, so broken. You know, he was crushed by this pain that these people has violated her. And then you're adding, you must forgive. So you're condemning her. If you cannot forgive, you will go to hell. That's true, but that's not the time. 
There is a capital T, capital truth, and the small t. Okay? But you need to know the proper timing. Because if you were the person who was raped, I don't know if you can forgive that time because at the very time you are, that was newly done to you, all you think is, I want to kill them. <laughs> because that is justifiable. That is the right thing to do. Do you understand? But of course, you will not tell them, who did that to you? Give me names. I will prepare my gun. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not the, the right thing to do. Do you understand? But the more you understand the word of the Lord, God's grace that God is just. Instead of pushing the person to forgive, you tell the person, you know what? The Lord is just. He will, His grace is with us. No sin will be uh, kanang i-allow ni Lord na mulabay lang without an answer. Right? Because God is just. So what do you do when the person is crying? You cry with them. At that time, maybe that's the, old, the only thing you can do. You know, there were many people we counseled. They were so hurt. They're crying. We're just there to listen said nothing. Comfort. Prayed for them. Not curse the, their enemies. <laughs> and then after a while, after they overcame, after a time, over time, they came back and say, I have overcome. In fact, there was one leader, he said, he told our teacher, he said, I'm glad you did not pick some verse about my struggle because he's also a, a, a strong believer he knew the word but he's not doing he's not following the word of God why because his struggle is based on a door that is open to the enemy you know you can open a door and allow the enemy to come in and feed you with bad things with pornography and stuff do you understand and at the same time you attend prayer meetings but at the same time, from Monday to Friday, you allow the enemy to fill you with garbage. Can that happen? Yes. So close that door. Do you understand my point? Yeah. The point is there are many fronts. We have to guard ourselves. I love you all. Now, this is the main thing. Last page, I'm done. I hope you get this. The mystery of multiple individuals becoming one or working as one. I am not saying that, you know, um, we are going to become gods, no. I'm talking about relationships, togetherness, partnership. In Deuteronomy 6.4, the word one, okay, referring to the triunity of God or the triune God, the word in Hebrew is ikad which means compound unity or not numerically one. Okay? One God who revealed himself in three persons, but the same God. In Mark 10, 7, talks about marriage, the two becoming one. Okay? Husband and wife becoming man. One, I'm sorry. It says, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, Verse 8, and the two will become one flesh, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Okay? Concerning in marriage, this relationship, that's covenant. Do you understand? One. But are you really one? No. You are two different individuals, but you, have, you were made one in the Lord. Amen. Now, John 14, 5 to 14, John chapter 45, is the unity and partnership of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Father. Let me just uh, say some of the points. He says, Jesus said in verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, listen to this, verse 7. 
If you really know me, you will know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Hmm? Verse 8. Philip said, Lord, show us the father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, verse 9. Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? What is Jesus trying to say? That if you've seen me, Jesus said, you've seen the Father. If you really know me, you also know the Father. You understand how the compound unity, how, how the Father and the Son is one. They have one vision, one, one everything. Hello? And it says, verse 10, Don't you believe that I am in the Father? Now, this is, this is uh, very important. Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing His work. Why is that? Because you see the kind of relationship they're always talking. They're always in communication. They are one. They are always in fellowship. Hello? They love one another. The Father and the Son. That's why they, he said, what I'm, try, I, I'm saying to you is not from me. It's from him who lives in me. He said, what? Now verse uh, 11, it says, Believe me when I say that I am in the Father. And you're trying to think, you are here. I see you. How can you say you are in the Father? And, and, and Jesus said, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Verse 12, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing and they will do even greater things than this because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Now, you understand they are not one person. Two different individuals. He said, I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Hmm. You may ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. So, you, if you try to think about this, this is the kind of working relationship, the partnership, the unity that the Father and the Son has. They are in perfect harmony, perfect relationship. Now listen, verse 15. Okay, number four. John 14, verses 15 to 21. This is now about us. Relationship and partnership of each believer with God through the Holy Spirit. So it is us and the Holy Spirit having the same heart and mind. This is our goal. This should be our goal in life. What is that goal? That the Holy Spirit and you think of the same thing. You have same vision, same heart, same agenda. Do you understand? This is the goal. That's why... We need to mature. We need to grow in the Spirit to the point where you have a constant fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You are living in the presence of God. You know the Word of God. So when the enemy comes to attack you, you say, it is written. And who help you to remember all the scriptures out of the many scriptures from the Bible? How can you remember? How can you quote the right scripture? It's the work of the Holy Spirit. When you're always in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, no matter what happens, you say, Lord, help me. And the Holy Spirit will remind you of the things you, you read from the Scripture. And then you know how to deal with the devil. You know how to conquer the enemy. You know how to conquer deception. You know how to discern deception. You know why? Because you know the Word of God. But you need the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So now, this is the point. Now let's listen. Verse 15, John 14, verse 15, it says, Jesus said, if you love me, he's talking to his disciples, listen, if you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate or comforter, helper, to help you and be with you forever. And it says, verse 17, the spirit of what? Truth, the spirit of truth, 
the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. So where is God? He lives in us. Where is the Spirit of God? He lives in us. Is God in us? And are we in Him? Yes, we are in Him through Christ. When you got born again, you are in Christ. Amen. Amen. But He lives in us also. That's why Jesus said, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Are you listening? Meaning to say, you don't live and you don't think, you don't live your life as though you are living your life by yourself. Your mindset should be like this. I am not my own. I am bought with a price. The Holy Spirit lives in me. So I do not get to decide what I want to do with my life. That should be a response. Knowing that you are just a vessel. A vessel of what? A vessel of, a vessel of who? The Holy Spirit himself. We are here to represent God on earth. Amen. Amen. That is why we're not here to do as we please because God, the Holy Spirit, wants to show Himself and to manifest who He is to the world through us. But don't be deceived. Don't think that because God is bigger and He lives in you that you become God. No. There is only one Creator and we will remain as His creation. Remember the distinction. You do not claim what belongs to God alone. He alone is God. Remember the song, God is God and I am man. Who, saw, who sang that song? Steve, Stephen Curtis Chapman. I like that song. So now you know that the Lord, you know, by His sovereign will, decided to live in you. At least, Respect Him. Respect Him. Be more cautious with what you do. How you think. How you live your lives. Why? Because He lives in you. He bought you with a price in the cross. You don't own yourself now. If He did not die for us, we're dead. We're doomed. But Jesus died for us. You know, I come to think about that while I'm doing the agriculture thing, the experiments, the, the, the farming, the gardening. And I pray and I pray and I pray and I remembered, Lord, everything I do is for your glory. Because Lord, if not for your grace, I would not be here. I remember how many times I'm supposedly dead. Physically dead. How many times I drowned? How many times I should have crushed? I have an accident. And I remember the time, remember, there was a 12 hours praise and worship. I had no sleep. We had to be part of the ministerial uh, project to do 12 hours praise and worship. And then we had to travel the next day. So after that, I drove. I tried so hard to open my eyes. And I slept while driving. I did not know. So the car is, and then all of them, my wife, our helper, our kids, were sleeping. And the driver, which is me, sleeping also. <laughs> Don't do this, okay? I'm just testifying. You know what happened? All of a sudden, somebody struck my neck. As in, it was a chop. I can feel it's like a... It's not a ball. I felt like a long, like there was a stick that was packed. And I, and bang, and I, 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 I was thrown at the steering wheel. Bang, and they said, ouch. And then I opened my eyes and I saw a big billboard that says, detour here. <laughs> so, And then I stop, I look at the white billboard, says, detour here. <laughs> and, then, and then my wife said, what happened, what happened? And then I said, oh, nothing, nothing, just slips. <laughs> so, so I drove down, detour here. And then I look on my left, left while we were at the bottom of that uh, bridge, I saw how 
hide the bridge and there was no water, only big rocks below. That means my family and I are supposed to be in heaven already. <laughs> and I look up, I said, my Lord. <laughs> so I continued driving, went up to the road again because it, the road was under repair. I mean, the bridge was totally... Uh, what are they, are they replacing it, demolished, whatever? I don't know. But all I know is that there was nothing there. Okay, now listen. While I was driving, I said, I felt the pain even more. I said, ouch. And then I looked back because I was thinking maybe the helper tried to hit me. Okay? And the helper was like, and all our boys sleeping with, with her. I said, and then my wife went back to sleep. So nobody was awake. All of us were sleeping and somebody chopped my neck. And who could that be? That's not the devil. Because the devil wants, oh, he's, oh, come on, come on, come on. No, no, no. God said, no, 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 send the angel. Pook. And then I said, so I told the angel, next time, please don't, not, not that hard. I mean, it's so painful. I struggled for a time. It's so painful, you know, because maybe the angel's trying to shake me. Hey, wake up, wake up. Doesn't wake up. Bang! <laughs> Do you understand? God's grace for us. How many times did the Lord save us from the attacks of the enemy and we are not aware? There's so many things to thank God for. I know you've been through a lot also. You've been through things and, you, and then you saw God's miracle saving you. Maybe you've been sick and you think you were dying, but then God healed you. That's another reason for you to serve God and be partners with God. Become one with the Holy Spirit. But you are not the Holy Spirit. Remember that. And don't walk around saying, I am the Holy Spirit. <laughs> no. You're crazy. <laughs> Do you understand? There is only one Holy Spirit. And He's not proud. He doesn't even want to be known. But He wants to have relationship with us. He wants to partner with us. Dr. Yonggicho calls Him my senior partner. Hello? Because he's the only one who can help us with what we've been through. With the pain in the past. With all the things, the experiences. The things that we can no longer change. Let go of it. It will not help you. But there's something that God can do. He wants to use you. No matter what your past is or may be. I don't care. What God cares about is that He loves you. Yeah. He loves you so much. And He, in the Lord, there is always a restart. In the Lord, you can start over. Yeah. That's why we have no right to condemn anyone. No right to judge our friends. No right to say negative things about other people. Because you know what? That could be you. If you only knew what they, you know, there were people who said, oh, what kind of person is this? R wrong reaction. What kind of uh, uh, character or, or behavior? And then, yeah, this person. And then we tried to counsel. We tried to learn why. And then we realized, oh, no. Oh, no. But you already judged the person you, without knowing what that person been through. So what is the goal? Learn how to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Learn how to partner with the Holy Spirit. You know, go deeper. Build that kind of, uh, build that kind of relationship with God, the Holy Spirit, where there is what we call the dynamic we call togetherness. That, Lord, is this you? Is this yours? Should I do this? Because if you don't do that, you know what? I... I don't know how many times I said it this week. 
many times, even to my wife, to other people, even before, I am going to say it again, one last time before I close. Is that okay? The easiest pray. You know what's a pray? P-R-E-Y. What is that in Cebuano? Victima. Yeah, victim. The easiest victim. Okay. The easiest prey. You know, prey and predator. Predator. Okay. The easiest prey in the world are the Christians. Because Christians are so trusting. In the world, there's so much scammers, fraud. But the easiest prey are Christians because we are by nature trusting people. <laughs> Bible says you have to be wise. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And the truth will set you free. So, friends, uh, that's it. I'm not going to add any more. But here's the thing. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Christians, it's time to transform. Amen? Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah.